Well, hello, students. Uh, once again, this is uh, Shalom Olevi, uh, your instructor for uh, the Civil War online course. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you so far this semester, and I certainly hope that you're enjoying the course. Uh, the reason I'm recording this video, uh, like the uh, first video, to try to establish a more personal rapport uh, with you. I read your assignments every week and offer some comments often there. Uh, same thing with the exams. But this week, you're taking your third exam, and I wanted to talk to you uh, about that exam and really a kind of trend that I noticed uh, in the first two exams uh, that might help you. Um, I'm kind of concerned about the disparity between uh, the quality of the discussion comments each week and the grades on the first two exams, particularly the second exam, uh, which was uh, mostly essay. Um, and what I see there is that many of you uh, seem to know the material, at least I get the impression that you're doing the reading and looking at the presentations uh, from your weekly discussions, but then on the exam uh, with the essays, you're not writing full or complete responses to the questions, uh, and that's causing you to lose a lot of points. So the thing to keep in mind is that <clears throat> a weekly discussion is worth uh, about 1% of your grade. Uh, an exam is worth about 10% of your grade. So don't treat the tests like they were a discussion. That is to write just one paragraph as an answer. That might be fine uh, for a weekly discussion, uh, perhaps depending what you're writing, but it won't be adequate for a response to an essay question. right? So uh, if the essay is worth 20 or 25 points, right, then you don't want to just get 10 out of 25 points. Uh, then, you know, the, the highest grade you can get in some cases uh, would be like a, a 40 or a 50. So you want to get, you know, 20 out of 25, or all 25 points. Uh, so that means writing full, complete essays. What am I looking for in those essays? I want uh, to get a sense that you understand the material, that you have sufficient factual uh, information to substantiate, justify, or prove your answer. Um, this is the difference between asking maybe 50 or 60 multiple choice questions or only four or five essays. So it's not that, that if you ask the essay question, the students are required to know less. It's just that they can use that body of information uh, and incorporate it in an essay form to, to give their responses. Um, let me give you an example <clears throat> using an actual essay question from, from test number two. Uh, if you recall, one of my questions was to talk about the development and role of, of political parties in bringing on the Civil War. And so the question said, discuss the role of the political parties in the 1850s. A. Compare and contrast the positions of the Democratic and Whig parties, B, briefly describe the position of the third party, such as the Free Soil Party, the Know Nothing Party, and the Liberty Party, C, finally discuss the creation of the Republican Party. Okay, uh, Dylan uh, wrote the following as an example of, of a good essay, I thought. Um, the political parties of the 1850s were very important during the time before the Civil War. The Whig Party and Democratic Party were both very different. The Whig Party were loosely uh, com uh, compared to the Democrats. The Whig Party was against slavery. The Democratic Party for slavery. The Whig Party was formed during Jackson's presidency. Jackson, who was a Democrat, supported slavery. Most Whig Party candidates were war heroes, while the Democrats were often common people. Uh, the Whig Party thought Jackson was dangerous because he was from the South and favored the South and slavery. The Know Nothings were a party mostly made up of anti-immigrants and of anti-Roman uh, Catholic feelings. Their motto was, I know nothing. The party was formed in New, in New York. It failed because it had issues with pro-slavery and anti-slavery and was split into Democratic or Republicans. The Free Soul Party was a political group that was against slavery in, in New Western territories. Uh, the party would fail and become part of the Republican Party. The Liberty Party was a group of abolitionists it opposed uh, it, uh, it, um, 
uh, opposed William Lloyd Garrison's anti-slavery views. Well, of course, uh, Garrison only is an abolitionist, but didn't believe in, in, in using the political process. He would also fail and would, uh, uh, and would go on to the Free Soul Party. Finally, the Republican Party would be created in 1854. It took the views of Whig, Free Soil, and Know Nothings. It was anti-slavery. The party said that slavery was an evil and must go. It challenged the Democrats, and now the two parties are the dominant parties today. Lincoln was the first successful Republican president. And that's the end of his, his answer. Okay, uh, about three or four paragraphs, um, but it laid out what I was looking for, that you understood how, the, how particularly the Democratic and Republican parties were created, how the Republican Party was a fusion of various uh, groups that had one thing in common, that they were all opposed to slavery, but for different reasons. Right, so the Free Soilers who didn't want the expansion because it really um, threatened uh, free white workers in terms of wages, uh, competition with slave labor, abolitionists, the Liberty Party who who opposed it on moral grounds, um, the Democratic Party that it was in the 19th century, the Democratic Party was the Southern or pro-slavery party. That's what I wanted to see that you understood those basic things uh, as Dylan kind of kind of laid out, not perfectly, but but. Um, but left no doubt in my mind that he did the reading and he understood understood the issue. That's what I'm looking for uh, of that quality of that detail uh, in this upcoming exam. Okay. Uh, now your papers are also due, or at least the first draft of the paper. The paper isn't due, of course, until the end of the semester, about four or five weeks from now. But I like to get a peek at your paper and see how it's going, how it's developing, if there are any problems, anything I could help you with any suggestions that I can make. So I would like for you to submit your first drafts in the folder that I created uh, called uh, Paper under the Blackboard tab, the Paper tab, and then there's a folder for the first draft. Submit your first drafts there as a Word document or a text document. I'll read them, edit them, comment, uh, and give those back to you. I also invite you to come see me here in my office uh, on the college campus, in Bethlehem campus, my office hours are a listing on the syllabus, and you could come by and we could sit down and we could talk about it. But certainly, make sure you submit your proposals uh, by the end of um, by the end of next week. Okay. Lastly, I uh, would like to see all of you um, for the Lincoln activities that we have coming up. Uh, we're studying the Civil War, and so you should be some of the most informed students uh, on campus. And, uh, and we are having the Lincoln and the Constitution exhibit, uh, which will be open to the public on November 3rd. And that's going to be here on the Bethlehem campus. Uh, and uh, we have a big opening celebration. I've invited you to some of the movies. But on November 3rd, Abraham Lincoln himself will be here in the form of a Lincoln pre presenter. Uh, and he'll be dressed in costume, he'll be doing some of the speeches, he'll be talking to students uh, about Lincoln. So Abraham Lincoln will be here at the exhibit itself on the meaning of freedom in the Constitution. Um, on November 9th, we're having a panel, a panel discussion, uh, which will consist of a Professor Anastasikas in our political science department. She'll be introducing uh, the importance of the Constitution in Lincoln. Uh, I will be the moderator uh, of the panel, and our participants will be Professor John Spurk in our Criminal Justice Department. Uh, we also have a judge, the Honorable Edward G. Smith, uh, will be on the panel talking about uh, Lincoln and the Constitution. And we have a colleague from Moravian College, Professor John Reynolds, in the Political Science Department. So a group of political scientists, historians, uh, lawyers, and judges uh, talking about Abraham Lincoln and talking about uh, the Constitution. Uh, that's a big question on this exam as we look at Lincoln's behavior uh, during, uh, during the Civil War as it relates to civil liberties. That was a discussion question this week. Um, as you look at um, uh, military campaigns and activities, so expect to see uh, at least one essay about important battles and generals and about Lincoln himself, right, who is the pivotal pivotal figure in all this. So read the chapters thoroughly uh, and be prepared um, um, to write about those. Come to these events. I will give you extra credit uh, if you write something about what you learned, what you saw, a critique of it. 
uh, so that extra credit could help lift your grade if you didn't do as well on the first two exams uh, as you had hoped. And if you're interested in being a museum docent, uh, that is, we're looking for students uh, to help lead tours of the exhibit, so it will be here through December. It's open to the public. We have some school groups, some high schools, some junior high schools, elementary students who are coming, and we're looking for students who might be able to to uh, lead tour groups. If you're interested, I'm doing a training session uh, tomorrow, actually, um, Friday, October 28th at 11 o'clock in uh, on the Bethlehem campus in room CC 117. Uh, come by, uh, just announce that you're in my class uh, and you can get the, the training of the of what we're doing uh, for the exhibit and uh, and then I'll take I'll take all of you for a private tour of the exhibit so you could see uh, what's contained there and how to how to uh, lead the groups. So opportunities for extra credit. Hopefully I've given you some tips on how to do very well in this next uh, exam and uh, invitation to come see me talk about your papers. So a lot of things. Hope you again, hope you're enjoying the course. Look at my videos. Look at Professor Blight's lectures from Yale University on all the topics that we talked about. Look at some of the uh, movies on each of these topics that I provide. Um, and uh, just really do well on this next exam. Take care. Be well.